Hey there, it's the one who's been to back with another video. Today's video is going to be about five things to know before taking your first travel nurse assignment with the influx of people switching from staff to travel nursing. This should be a beneficial video before you just jump right in because there's a lot that needs to happen before you take your first travel nurse assignment. So let's get on to the video. Tip number one, make sure you have all your certifications before you even apply for your a travel assignment. So if you're ER, make sure you have your ACLS, your BLS, your PALS, your TNCC, your CE, and your NIHS, your stroke scale. If you're P's, make sure you have PALS, EMPC, BLS. If you're ICU, make sure you have ACLS, PALS, BLS, ACLS, CCR, Whichever the ICU certification is, you all know it's not ICU, but you get what I'm saying. Make sure you have all your certifications, all your immunizations. Yes, you do need immunizations to go into your travel assignment. Especially now, lots of travel assignments are requiring COVID vaccine. You do need your shot records up to date. And then you have to do a drug test, physical. Make sure all that's done before you apply because once you apply, they want you to either they expect you to start within the next two three weeks so you won't be running around in two weeks trying to get all the stuff done when you all have it done make sure you have everything organized and ready to go before you apply tip number two make sure you look up your hospitals that you're applying to before you sign your contract because lots of hospitals may look nice on paper that pay rate may look very enticing but you gotta look at it this way usually the higher the pay rate and the bill rate the crappier working conditions are in that hospital so you have to kind of weigh your pros and cons like do you want higher bill rate but do you have working conditions medium to lower bill rate okay working conditions it just all depends on what all you can handle and what all you can manage Look at the hospital, patient community, patient population, types of disease processes that hospital gets, if they're a trauma center, if they're a maggot hospital, if they're a community hospital. Look at all that before you sign that contract because once you sign that contract, you leave the lab okay, to fulfill that contract, except for if a safety reason comes up where you can't, but you leave the lab okay, to fulfill that contract. Third tip, you have money saved aside because most people according to staff jobs go to travel nursing and then they get to the travel assignment two weeks and it gets canceled. Well, you can't really just up and go back to your staff position unless you're PRN or per diem. So, and it usually takes about two, three weeks to get another assignment. So, you're in this new city, new state, your assignment's canceled, you have no income. You need at least three months worth of paychecks saved up before you start your travel nurse assignment. People will tell you varying degrees to that, but at, le at least three months saved up, at least. <laughs> and tip number four, make sure you get your experience beforehand. Minimum two years experience, even before COVID, pretty much 90% of travel nurse companies would not hire you without a minimum of two years of nursing experience in high specialty. And now they're taking people in one year, six months, and new grads are even saying, oh, I'm gonna get a few months experience and then I'm gonna go travel. It's not travel nursing orientation, it's not like new grad orientation. You don't get weeks, months, you get one shift, maybe two, and if that usually an orientation for travel nurses is you do your modules ahead of time or the day of and then on the unit you get two three hours of orientation and then you have your patients and you just go to your preceptor to find where things are and that's it you really need to be able to function autonomously as a travel nurse because no one's going to be holding your hand 
no one's gonna make sure you're okay. You're there to fill a void and fill a need, therefore you need to be able to function on your own. So, and there's lots of new grads like, oh yeah, I can function my own, I know, I know stuff, I, I can figure it out. It's like, you don't, you know what you don't know. <laughs> well, you don't know what you don't know. In the sense that there's lots you can learn just from being a nurse for two years versus six months. Because I've been a nurse for four and a half, going on five years, and there's still things I have yet to see. There's nurses I know who've been there for 10 years that have seen stuff for the first time a few weeks ago. So. You need to be able to function as possible. You need to get that two years experience before you step for your first travel and assignment. Because you also got to take into account, ultimately, you are those care for these patients. If you haven't seen some before, odds are you probably will not get help to figure it out. And it's very dangerous for that patient if you've never taken care of them before and if no one's able to help you. And if you're just trying to wing it, trying to figure it out, remember that's someone's family. Like, look at, like, would you want your family being taken care of by somebody who's never seen something before? Probably not. So, look at it as if you were taking care of your own family, you have people's families in your hands. So, <sighs> experience, please, before you sign on to a traveler's contract. I'm not saying this to say you can't do it, because you can. But get your experience before you just set them out on your first assignment. It is make sure you have multiple agencies and multiple recruiters, which I'll get into a different video about ranking the travelers agencies. But you may have one recruiter at one agency that you mesh really well with, but you also may have another recruiter at another agency that has positions at a hospital you really want, but this other recruiter doesn't. Or you may have a recruiter at this agency and this agency that they have jobs at both hospitals, but one agency and recruiter is offering more than the other agency. And that way you can bounce stuff off of both of them, all, all, all of them, to get paid more for what you're supposed to be doing. Also, personality-wise, you may mesh well personality-wise with one worker at one agency better than another one at another agency. So, have multiple agencies, multiple recruiters. Remember, those agencies and recruiters are working for you. You don't work for them. So, they don't get paid unless you do. So, if you, if you find one agency that's offering more than another one at the same hospital, if it's Everything that you're able to manage, typically go with the higher paying one, because at the end of the day, those agency recruiters want you to have a higher paying assignment, because then they get paid more. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below, and I will answer them in the comment section. And there will be more videos in this, because travel owners, we got this. <laughs> it's fun. I like it. I like the autonomy, I like to not stay in one place, but it's definitely a learning curve, so new grads right out of school, please get your experience, please, please, please get your experience before you jump into the travel nursing, but you got this, you can do this, believe in you, I'll talk to y'all in another video, and this is Millennial Nurse Mentor, signing off.